what what that says, how how is the top one percent making their money? It's obvious that we're not doing what they're doing. Right. Right. So we got to get to doing what they're doing. That's probably owning businesses, investing in the market like we're doing now, in a different way, not the average way. The average way everybody does it is invest in a four hundred one k plan, invest in their IRAs, and that's probably about it. You know? um, they they own real estate. They receive assets, and they receive an income from that. You know, so they do a lot of things a way to make income. So they're growing leaps and bounds. And it's also a way to diversify their money so that they don't pay taxes on themselves. Yep. Like we do. Yep. They most of the time they pay less taxes than your average middle class family. Yep. And when you said that. You know who the uh, Omaha of uh, Oklahoma is, right? Yeah. Uh, Warren Buffett. Mm -hmm. He said he paid less taxes than his secretary. He's a billionaire. That's bad. So. Well, that's what makes a lot of money for it. It was all legal. It, it was all legal. He dogged for it. Yeah. And the next thing was uh, that says the taper is coming. Get over it. You guys know what the tapering is? We talked about it a couple months ago. The tapering is the, first of all, what it was is, you remember the QE program that the Fed did? We were buying bonds to keep the interest rates low in America. So interest rates low, got as low as like 1%. So you can go buy a car real easy. Uh, buy a house, the interest rates is really low. That's because of this bond buying program that Ben Bernanke did. So uh, he has been doing this for quite a while, about five years now. So now it's time to taper it off. So it's, he sell, he's buying bonds at $85 billion a month. So it's a, it's a real fine line right now. So he, Everybody expects him to taper 10 to 15 billion off of the 85 billion. They said it could come this month, or it could come, and it didn't matter if it came now or if it didn't come until December. It was coming. Right. And they said, well, what happened is our interest rates are going back up. Well, the, here's the thing the interest rates have already went up on the anticipation that the taper is coming. So right now it's up to three percent. So if he tapers to ten to fifteen billion dollars, we're at the three percent range. What everybody's worried about if he tapers more than ten or fifteen percent, because if he tapers more than that, then you know interest rates are going to rise a little bit high. Okay. Uh, another the reason why the stock market usually pulls back on that kind of scare is that companies make less money because they got to shell out more money because of the interest rates are higher on them, right? So that's that's a, this is where the scare is at. Um, also, it could also be a scare if they choose not to taper because then they say, what's wrong with the economy? Yeah, why why didn't they taper? Right. So there's a thin line going on right now. So uh, on the 18th is when they start their Fed talks. So if you want to listen into it, just go on CNBC, uh, Channel 46, um, and listen to it uh, on the 18th. Mm -hmm. The market should get a little calm when he starts talking. If it takes off, he says something either good or bad. <laughs> His name is Ben Bernanke. <laughs> yeah. Called the taper program? Uh, it's, it's the QE, Quantitative Easing Program, and they call it tapering because it's tapering off the bond buying program from $85 billion a month to something less. Really, yes, you want to do the valuation. For yes, um, yesterday. Okay. 
Are you scared? Don't it scare you? Talking about October, we got something else to talk about. The budget. You're following a good market. You're following the good. How did you know that? How did you know that? It does usually tanks in October. Probably want to wait till after yeah. that uh, mark, October time. Yeah. Point. That's so do I want to move it? I would think you might, it's going to get kind of jittery. That's what I did. I did it back in June when they started talking about we expected the market to drop. Yeah. And I did that in June. And I had to leave mine in for at least 60 days. But nothing's really shown us that it was worth getting back into the market yet. So I locked mine where it's at. Mine right just now. keeps going up, 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 up. You know, I mean, mine's all in right now. It just, it just. You I probably mean. want, you probably want to be careful. It had dropped twice. Remember the first time we talked about it dropped five percent, mm -hmm. came back up. Like it last, March. Yeah, eight percent actually. Yeah. It dropped eight percent, then it came back up. It's dropped another five percent. Now it's coming back up. Now. When we get when we start talking about the overall market, is that that is at that resistance point. If it can't break that resistance point, this heads down to at least to the 200 day moving average, in my opinion. So we'll we'll bring that up here shortly. But good talking about October. You know we have a budget that needs to be fixed by Congress. And what they said was Obama was talking today. He was he was kind of mad on TV, <laughs> talking about Congress can't get their act together. We have to fix the budget. Um, they said the Republicans are threatening to shut down the government uh, because they want to Obama to stop the Obamacare Act. If he does that, then they say, we'll fix the budget and we'll move on. He said, that's not happening. You know, I was, we were driving, because we went back for Labor Day weekend, too, so I was listening to the radio. And I don't remember where I was, someone like Iowa, Iowa or something like that. And they this commercial came on and says, you know, your current health care insurance meet federal regulations. Well, I thought... I don't know. Damn, I've been I've had health care since I was 18 years old. I've taken care of myself and my kids. And I'm like, I don't need to meet their requirements. I, know. Right. I was so offended. Right. What is their requirement? They don't even know. They don't. And this is supposed to go through October. No, it doesn't this is start in effect October. 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 Yeah. It's already in effect, but. The majority of it will go in October when you know how they do the new thing at work, the re enrollment re at work. They probably push and keep into a month. They're sending it out now. And everybody has to get out of UPS is not going to insure spouses, and Kroger is not going to insure spouses. One of them just is Illinois or Indiana, another one actually. But you know that to uh, a lot of a lot of companies now are dropping people's work hours to 29 hours a week. So they don't have to provide health care. Right, so they don't have to provide health care. 
Um, there was a, on that Motley.com or whatever it is, there yeah. was also an a, um, article in there that I want to read. Part of that now is pulling out of this Obamacare. That is one of the larger insurance companies. They're pulling something. I didn't get a chance to read it, but so I'm like, that's that. It was one of the headlines. So this QE is on the 17th of September or October? September. It was the September and the budget um, talks are in October. Actually, it should be happening before October because the government actually supposed to shut down on the 30th of September. Yeah, October once a week. Yeah. It's supposed to shut down. No, they've known it was an issue. They should have been working on it all along. Right. They're on vacation. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they're on vacation. They like to take vacation. Jumped up over like 155 points on the Dow, 15 points on S and P or something like that, real high. And the reason why is that Ben Bernanke was supposed to be replaced by another Fed chairman named Summers. I can't think of his first name, John Summers or something like that. And Summers was supposed to be more of a guy who's going to make sure interest rates rise, and everybody was afraid of having Summers in there because he's definitely was going to make sure the taper comes off quickly. That's what everybody's thoughts were. So when he took withdrew his name from it, everybody was relieved and happy and the market takes off and now everybody thinks Janet Yellen is going to be the new Fed yeah. chairman. So, so that was a no brainer for him to appoint her position. Yeah, a lot of lot of people wanted Jeff Dillon. So now it looks like she's going to get, get it. So and that's what the market wanted. So the market takes off, it jumps up, it has a little gap here, but still no conviction in the in Not volume. volume. So with no conviction in volume, if you drew your line across here, right? It's at resistance. So uh, right now the it looks like, you know, and it's near what close to overbought levels at the 70, 70 line. Remember our RSI is the relative strength. If it's above seventy, it's overbought. If it's below thirty, it's oversold, right? So it's near the overbought levels. It's near our resistance previous high. So it's near our previous high, which is our resistance point. And it's not. It, it didn't break it. So we got to be real cautious. 
Okay. Uh, also, the uh, the Dow. Now, remember, we use the Dow as a, a market sentiment. So, how people really feel about the market, right? And the Dow is the same way. So, and the Dow. Remember what? How many stocks is in the Dow? Third. Oh, thirty. Yeah, it consists oh, of. Yeah. yeah, it consists of thirty stocks made by a guy named Charles Dow. And again, here's our resistance level. Here's one. Here's the second one. And look, it hasn't reached the third one, and no volume on a day like today when the market was 155 points on the day. Okay, so we have to be real careful. Uh, this is also near overbought level. Okay. And <laughs> now we got the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq was the only market that was down. The you know the Nasdaq is full of technology stocks, technology right? Stuff, yeah. And the reason why we look at the technology stocks is because the business business is used to buy technology keep going. They're the ones that buy to renew their equipment, using IT and all that other stuff constantly. But however, it stayed above uh, our support level since July. And then now it's up here, but it looks to me, it looks like it's tiring out. And it, and it started up high and then it's just closed lower. So now you have a, a NASDAQ, a tech stock that uh, index that flows lower, you look like it has the S&P tiring out at resistance and a Dow tiring out at resistance. So that tells me three ways that we should be careful for now what's going on. So with that said, we have to, when we choose our options this month, we have to choose them carefully and we have to put our strike price carefully so that we don't get put to the stock and we can keep going, making money. Right. Okay. Did we have a? Are we going to talk about our um, PBR option that expired mm -hmm. last month? PBR. Yeah, that expired last month. Did we yeah. have an option? PBR. We have an option. It's not PBR. It's Oshkosh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk yeah. about. We'll talk about Oshkosh. <laughs> So, yeah, in the news, we already talked about Summers, the chairman of the heat, the Jewish name. Oh, Jeff Kramer said that buying stocks at this level is like walking into quicksand. So he feels the same way. He's saying that he would not buy stocks at this level. That's what he said today on CNBC. Uh, Art Cash, and he's a, a guy who's been around for a long, long time. And he was there when the, they had the crash in 1980. And... Uh, he said the rally may not be real, and by looking at the charts, it almost looked like it's not real. Okay, because if a real rally would have broke above that resistance point, and then we'd have said, "All right, we all right, we keep going." Um, this is another point for the bomb and the question. Talk about again. We already in a sequester. Obama said in his speech today that because of the sequester. You guys know what the sequester is? Like all the uh, military jobs and stuff in that. Really. Yeah, like he, like he had this automatic cuts put in mm -hmm. because they couldn't come up with the budget, so they call it the sequester. So it's all these cuts is happening, uh, and it's actually keeping jobs from really growing like he says he wants it to. So if they can fix the budget, the sequester will be gone and jobs should be back on the roll, hopefully. So, okay, before we do that, we should be going over, you want to go over our stock. Let's go over our stock. Are you recording this? I got this, yeah. Okay, I didn't know if you had it on or not. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was going to read over that one right now. Yeah, it's kind of hard to take in the everything. Oh, yeah. I'm still waiting on it. We go through 
go over some of the same stuff every month, just for a refresher. And well, of course, because there's 30 days between things, right? And life happens. Man, this stock is going higher. However, it's going higher. Look, we sold this option. Do you remember Cash Brown Works up this option? Uh, no. I don't remember what the amount was. 25 cents, wasn't it? We got 25 cents for it. We'll look at the my iClub in a second. That's how much we bought it. Right. Hold on, let me pull it up. 25 cents a share. Or, because it takes 100 shares to buy an option. For, for an option. Right? Hold on, we'll see. Hold on, let's check it out. Yeah, that's what I have. Yeah, that's it. No, that's a sheet that he has. That's what I sent for in the book, but it's not there. It's a couple sheet of cables. Okay, we sold the option at $40. $40. You see right here? We sold Oshkosh. This is simple. P is the put. Uh, $40 is the strike price. We sold the option. And then we sold uh, 1,200 shares. Okay. Uh, you want to see how the price we got it for? Let's see. We, yeah, you're right. We got it for 25 cents, and uh, we got 300 dollars on it. Okay. All right. Show her a list of all the uh, people that are on there so that she can see what the shares are right there. So, See right here, this is your number. The number number right there, that's how many units you have, the cash value. Yep. So I would be a signed member number. I have you would be signed a member number. Yeah, signed a member number just to kind of keep it private. So we can pull it up. And know. that's what we have in there today. As of today, this is what we have. And remember when we if this shows zero here, that means we already collected our money, right? We all have eight thousand one hundred eighty-four dollars and thirty cents. Yes. Just by contribution. And and earnings. And earnings. Since I've been in there, I have made thirty-seven dollars. Yeah. How do you do that? Because what I contributed. You can click on me, you can see what I contributed, and then what my earnings were. But you can, yes, you can see what you contributed. Yeah. Where if you're in a savings account, you're making nothing. <laughs> less than 3%. Yeah. yeah, way less. You guys want to see, uh, I'm going to show you guys something in a second. Let's, let's finish it off. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so let's go back. So we sold the option at forty dollars. So we sold the option down here. Okay, back in August, we sold the option. The market that stock popped up on high volume. Remember, we saw that the last time. Remember, that was uh, exciting in the market. So every time you see high volume, which is this, that means the amount of stocks trading hands. When you see a Seemingly high volume that tells you that institutional investors are in that market. Okay, there's a lot of excitement, and it was some good news. So the stock takes off, and it's it's been in a sideways pattern. But what makes me think that the stock is going to break out is just by looking at this. Remember, we talked about the MACD you have the lower hump and then the less lower hump. That means there's a lot of selling pressure, a lot less selling pressure. Then the market should take off and go higher. Remember that? Look I think we talked about. Oh. <laughs> I don't. She wasn't here. 
Oh. I think it might be just an energy. Nine. Okay. But is that, is that a little hump under and then another little hump under? Yeah, you see that? So you got the big hump here and you got the less hump there. That's telling you that the buying, the selling pressure is about over. And then while I'm looking at this, it broke resistance right there. The stock should go high. So that's what I'm like, like what I'm seeing. Okay. Um, does it matter to us that it's breaking out? No, because we are collecting our dough. We just self-assure that we're going to close out with our money so we can make another trade. So, uh, the stock is still not even overbought now, so that's good. Remember the overbought, oversold levels? Oh, okay, let's go back. No, 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 no. This is the relative. <laughs> I have to come in and spend some time with you. This is the relative strength index. And the purpose of it is to find out if the stock is overbought or if it's oversold. So if the line, the relative strength line goes above 70, that means that the stock market is overbought. So if you have a stock market, a uh, stock that's been rising over time, and it goes to the overbought territory like that, usually it starts to come down. And the greens, the green bars are buying and the reds are selling. No. Nope. Like, yes, but no. The gray bars are more, say, what? the gray uh, bars are what? I, that's more, what? I thought they were more, more sellers than buyers. The gray bars are more what? Sellers than buyers. Buy, more, buyers than sellers, right. right. More buyers than sellers. Don't just say they're just buyers. They're just more buyers than sellers because they're selling. It's just more buyers right. than sellers. That's right. And then the red is more sellers so, versus buyers. Right. That's what I, yeah, that's what I, yeah. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so, right now, it's, it, we're doing good to stop. So, cool. we're going to close out good and no no worries. What about our new mining? That new mining went up to $34 and now it's back to $29. Nuh uh. So, we're still holding on to that thing. Okay. So, uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and start selling call options on it. Okay. okay? They did say in that one, um, they were talking about gold in one of the, on that uh, Motley.com or whatever it was, about uh, people liquidating their post oh, yeah. Yes. So that's New Mott Mining is like a mining company. The mining company that might throw gems or gold or whatever. So I heard. I've been reading about the gold. Uh, they said that the gold stocks has created just gold to humble or go down in tandem with gold stocks. You know what gold stocks are? Are they the, like gold bars? Maybe? What what a gold stock is 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 a a, a company who created a who had on some gold, right? In some place that you don't know. <laughs> you never know. Okay. And then what they say is, hey, let's issue some shares of stock for the amount of gold that we have in our vault. Right? So you don't really know how many bars of gold they really have. Okay. Okay. And That's so. Nice. Kind of I would never buy gold stock. Okay. And, sell on the ticket tomorrow. And so. Yeah. So yeah, because if you're selling more of these shares and you don't really have to go bars in there, what the heck? What the heck are people doing? And I don't. It's not being monitored or anything like that. It's, and then right now, I believe it's affecting our gold mining stocks. Okay. So let's just be patient with the mining. Huh? Don't buy gold stocks, but you can buy gold mining like. Newmont Mining, or they got Rio Tinto, gold bars, physical gold. Uh, gold stocks don't ever mess with them. If, uh, say if there was a, a world crisis and, and the U.S. dollar went down and you're trying to cash in your gold stocks, you won't have any money. It's just like cash. You won't have any money. So I will stay away from those. Okay. okay. 
Uh, so that's it with the uh, Oshkosh. Any questions? Hundreds, but you can you can go ahead and ask a few. You know, me, I have to write them down and go over them, and I'll you'll be getting emails over the next five days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're gonna start with our stock selection. I decided to do something a little bit different than what we have done in the past is just to go over our stocks now so that you guys can kind of have an idea of what you like before we leave. Yeah. All right. Um, one of the stocks that came up on this, uh, well, first of all, how I came up with them is I used our fin is, right? Pre selections. Right. You use your own. Yep, yeah, the art are the ones that we made up. Okay. Right? And I started looking through the FinBiz charts. So I looked on through. there today too and I took a couple to look at just in case. Okay. To present just in case we needed to, but since you have your five. Okay. Now the selections that you're saying that you guys selected, I wasn't here that day. Right. But I uh, actually um, found him the gift of my user and everything. So I went step-by-step step by the video. Yes. So that's how you selected your selection also, right? Yes. So that's all the And yep. you can save your ideas. Yep. But yep. then we're going to go back in there and change it the next month. It'll say, because it's like, you just copy it. Say, by hand, but you don't have to save it every month. If you want to make changes. Yeah. If you want to make changes. Yeah. I didn't make any changes. I just left them the way they were. Yeah. And I just picked out four or five, or three, actually. One of them was on that. Um, Three stocks, three hated stocks that should be loved. Oh, and that's yeah. how I found that article. Oh, okay. It was on that Prince, Francesca's holdings. Well, we'll take a look at some of them. Okay. Okay. Um, this is called Clear System. It's a thermal uh, imaging system company that markets its products to commercial and government customers. Unfortunately, U.S. government funded customers demand for its products and certain companies have to blame, but certain factors might still make uh, F FLIR systems the best investment compared to its peers. Was awarded uh, a 49 uh, firm fixed price uh, indefinite delivery. What does that mean? What's a firm fixed price? Uh -huh. it's, it's just fixed. It's, uh, like who fixes it though? Like is it the government that fixes it for them? Okay. Yeah. Uh, quantity contract per uh, to repair and maintain electro optical sensor system on U.S. Marine Corps ground based operational system. So it's a it, it works with the government pretty much. Okay. Um, um, this the re reason I like this stock is because I like the chart, of course, and. Uh, it looks like it is a good time to buy it. Um, the reason, again, we saw our uh, volume, seemingly high volume back here on August 28, 29, pop up higher in the stock market. I mean, the stock just kind of stayed in a range on low volume. Okay. But it didn't fall below support. No, it, it didn't fall below support. That's why I like it. Uh, so it's just hanging around support. It look, might be waiting for more news to come out on it. But however, there was a lot of excitement here. There was some good news on the stock. Okay, stock came off of overbought levels, right? Here's another good reason. You see how it's overbought here, and then the stock just kind of slowly came down. But usually you have a stock that goes up for a while and then goes overbought and just shoots down. Okay. But it just kind of gradually came down. Um, also, our MACD, we got a, a two humps, which are higher, lower, uh, a lower hump, and then a higher lower hump, however you say it. <laughs> but it looks like that the buying pressure of this is about to wane, and it looks like it's going to go high. So it looks like it's about to be bought up and go high, just by looking at it. Charlie. So what I did with the last uh, club is that we actually
we went to bed and we all collectively tried to find something that could be wrong with the stock by looking at the news. Let's do that. Okay. What's the symbol? F-L-I-R. All right, here it is. All right, oh, let's go over our highlights. So, uh, as we know, our highlights is already, because we already got our screener in place, it should give us good readings on our financial highlights. So when you look at your ROA, remember our return on assets, which means that, for example, if you bought a house and you rented it out, what kind of return it gives you? Okay, uh, it's 10.8 percent, which is good. Our return on equity is 15 percent, which is good. A lot of people say, "Well, how do you know that's good?" Well, I just look at it, and make sure it's not red, or you can that's take it and compare it to another company in that same industry, and you can start comparing you know, what it should be, you know what I mean? So that's the that's the best way to do it if you want to see if this is a, actually a good... And we looked at price to book. That was another... We look at price to book. Remember, we decided to take price to book out because if the price to book is... When you, when you put it in your uh, thing, you can have it... Uh, the price to book could be undervalued. So if you read it, uh -huh. And it'd be undervalued, and a lot of people say, "Well, it's undervalued," but they don't understand the whole undervalued. You kind of want undervalued stocks, but however, I mean, even if it's overvalued, it's still good. Where's that? Second column. Yeah, see that? That's still good. You know? um, current and quick, quick ratio. Remember, our current quick ratio tells us if the Companies can pay off its immediate liabilities and its short-term uh, obligations. You know, so if they make parts, they have to pay their part suppliers. You know, in a timely fashion. So this is what this tells you: you want something above a one, one or above. However, if it's too high like this, it can kind of tell you something. Like, why is it that high? And what I say is that they are not managing their money the way you would think they, should, you know, should manage it. So they got should have a lot of cash on their books, and you can tell that by looking at all term debt to equity, which is 0.24, which is a low, very low uh, debt that they have. Yeah, this our preset one was 0.7. What we did for the long term debt to equity, we put 0.7. Point seven. Yeah, zero point seven. Yeah. Yeah. So and that one is point two. Yeah. And so remember that tells us point two tells us it takes two years and four months to pay off this debt. Okay. Also, is there anything else we look at? That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. So what I like to do is when I'm looking for to make a trade on a stock, the first thing I'm trying to find is is just by looking at the headlines, is there anything that stands out in this list of headlines, anything that I just do not like that could deter me from it? Can you guys see it? Yeah, I'm just reading down through it because all the top ones look good. They all look good, don't they? Yeah. They said it was downgraded. To a hold from a buy that was back on the 26th of July, so we don't really care about that. Right. The last like two weeks, all the good they were awarded. Yeah. Contracts so, and uh, for the Navy and the Pentagon and that's pretty good. So now that we found out that we didn't see anything that could deter us from the stock. Now we want to see, I always try to find a catalyst. If you can find a catalyst to make it say, oh, I like this stuff. So that's what I like to do next. Um, 
So then we started looking at it. This one says, one of the best stock work a closer look. Guys, so I'll let you guys pick which headlines is interest to you, and we'll uh, pull it up and read through it. Which, what are we looking for? Something that stands out that you might want to read. The very first one, the defense stock worth the closer look. Yeah. The MotleyPool.com. All right. Uh, Increased revenue, impressive 22.7 percent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it says the second quarter revenues jumped 15.1 percent year over year, uh, 389.3 million, which might give you an impression that the company is knocking a cover off the ball, while it isn't. Uh, doing poorly by any means. Clear Sensor stated that it owes that revenue jump mostly to its acquisitions of Lorax and Trackfication, Trackfacon, late last year. These purchases led the thermal vision and management segment to increase revenue by an impressive 22.7% without it. This revenue might not have risen at all. The integrated system segment has also performed well with revenue skyrocketing 160.1%. But in this case, the improvement stems from strong shipment, which indicates organic growth. Um, the good news for segments ends there. Uh, Ray Marine, right? Let's see. Revenues dropped 0.6 year over year. Well, wow. oh, okay. Let's see. There's something about fluid on the Okay, Fleer's cost of goods sold has increased 14.8% to 193.3 million year over year, and SG and A expenses have increased 11.8% to 80.2 million. However, this is mostly due to recent acquisitions and increased revenue. R&D expenses also moved higher from 37.5 million to 39.6 million, and the expense is expected to remain high due to challenging revenue environment. This might sound a little confusing considering the company saw an impressive revenue improving year over year, but over the past three years, the company's revenue in millions hasn't exactly posted steady growth. Huh. Mm -hmm. Was a market cap? What that, that doesn't. Huh? Something about a market cap. Right there under where it isn't always better. Bigger isn't always better. It says with a market cap of 4.57 billion, Larry gets forked by rivals. Else. Yeah, L3 Communications. And Lockheed Martin. Yeah, who cares the market caps of 8.27 billion. Yeah. Three is laying off people. Oh, L3 is going to hit a sequester. Okay. I just saw it said market cap, and I was like, uh oh, that's it. So if they fix the sequester, then L3 should be going okay. Should be. And Lockheed hey. Martin, too. Well, Level 3 is laying off 2,000 people. Laying off or? Who? Level 3. Oh, L3. If that's Level 3, no. Yeah, L3. Level 3 communication. Where do you see that? I missed it. Oh, I just know that. Oh, you know Did that. Did you hear it like on the Yeah, and there's a telecom. Yeah. Yep, I oh. Oh, so okay. I wonder if that's the same one, then they might not be in such good shape. Well, I don't, I think level three is L3. L, no, L3, L3 communication, but level three might be good. Yeah, that's LL. Yeah. Uh, comparatively, Clear Systems has reaffirmed 
It's fiscal due to our ESP guidance. That's earnings per share guidance of $1.56 to $1.66. And it expects total revenue to be approximately 10% higher than 2012. As if that's not enough, good news. Where system sports a debt to equity low ratio of just 0.25. Our said 0.24 for us. Showing stronger debt management than L3 communications, Black E. Martin, and debt to equity ratios of 6.4%. And 8.5 respectively. 8.85? Holy crap! I wouldn't invest in that. Not Lockheed Martin. No. Nope. They've been around forever. Yeah. And uh, look at the cash rate. They gave it a three cash rate. They get L3 of four caps. They get Lockheed Martin of three caps. So, what do you guys think about what we read? It's got mixed information. I, mean, it's I know, they just kind of jumped around yeah. the good news and bad news and then say, however, they up their EPS guidance, which is what I like. That's what I like is that they up their guidance so we can kind of figure, we can kind of know that if we was to get into this stock, they up their guidance for the rest of 2013, then we know that we should be okay for one month. Selling the option right. below the below support. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to read? Or you want to go on to another stop? It seems like they wanted 137 million Navy. Dollar uh, Navy contract. Uh, let's see. Pentagon awarded them a three hundred eleven million dollars in contracts. Yeah. What's that stock stud? Oh, you want to hear what? This is a video. Let's see. Let's see what the video says. Where's your TV at? I'm gonna get one. You have one. I did. Hey, you had a, when was the last time? No, that's a monitor. Oh, when did you yeah. retire early? And team Ameritrade, we like to look beyond the numbers and see the people behind the programs. Uh, Are you that kind of financial advisor? I don't know how to get it right. You can't hear the thing. Yeah, I think. I mean, it showed here, but it's 
Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, for what we see, it, it's an okay, it's an okay company. We could possibly make some money if we decided to make this our number one choice. Okay. So we know about Clear System. It's a defense company. Uh, it's been winning contracts. Uh, what's the price of this thing? Then? So it's, right now it's at thirty some dollars and thirty one dollars. Okay. Say if we could sell an option at um, somewhere around twenty eight dollars, I think we'd be safe. Okay. What do you guys think? Twenty. How many? How much percentage is that? Twenty eight. Minus. Oops, I did that wrong. So that's a that's nearly thirteen percent now. That makes sense. No. Uh -oh. Twenty eight minus three thirty one eighty nine. That's three dollars and eighty nine cents divided by twenty eight. Right. I'm getting thirteen point eight nine percent. <laughs> so if we can sell an option that low, that's pretty freaking good. Because you got 18%, 15% down, that's a long ways down actually for a stock. So if we can sell one that low, an option that low and, and make some money, I think that's pretty good. So let's go on to our next stock. What's the name of the next stock? Which one is it? H A L. Oh, Halliburton. We may have looked at that before. Halliburton. Um, this is uh, uh, oil and gas play. Halliburton, this is, this is, uh, yeah, we looked at them back in April. Oh, well, we did. Yeah, PDC Energy and Shuffle Master. Oh, okay. So, oil and gas equipment. yeah, they're oil and gas equipment. Uh, they work with shale, gas. They they try to get their hands on all types of oil. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. Um, so what I liked about the stock, let's go to stock section. Okay, we got our exceedingly high volume there, right? Uh, stock takes didn't go off too fast, but it's probably because it has a whole lot of shares. Five hundred fifty-one thousand. Shares to list like right here on a low day, on a low average. That's probably the reason why. Uh, it had went to overbought above the 70 line, kind of came down a little bit, and it's just kind of hanging out right here. Okay. So, our support level, I would think, is a safe support level. It's probably right around here. Old resistance right here, and it sits on the 50. The 50 day moving average line. Remember, our 50 day moving average line is the average prices over 50 days. Okay? What do you guys think a good support level would be? Yeah, that's what I was You think so? Think? Yeah. Up there? If I was a swing trader, I would put that support level at 48, but we're trying to hold it for 30 days. 
because uh, you know every time a stock pulls back and it goes up, that's the new support. Line. But because we're holding 30 days, I wouldn't take that chance. So I would bring it probably down to here where you have strong support at your day. Okay. Uh, remember our exceedingly high volume. We got institutional investors in there. Uh, this the MACD is not telling us much, so we're not going to talk about that. So now we need a catalyst to make us believe that this is um, a stock that we want. Any questions about the chart? Okay. All right. So now we, uh, let's just go over our financial highlights so we can kind of remember what they are and what they mean. Uh, return on assets, remember. Uh, it's pretty good. I'm just looking for red. Then we have your return on equity, which is 12.2%. Okay. Our quick and current, this is, I like to see a one on the quick and current ratio. I mean, if it's higher, it's, you know, you make some money, who cares, right? But I mean, if you was like an investor, you'd probably be concerned if that was high because you're like, what, what are they doing with their money that the they have a high current, quick and current ratio. Okay, that means they got a lot of extra money on the balance sheet that should be used for something. Okay, they got a low uh, long-term debt to equity ratio, which means that it takes three years and one month to pay it off their debts. And that's it. That's it for the financial highlights. So now what's the next thing we're going to do? We're going to look for something. Yes. Hmm. What's the insider trading alert? So the fourth one down. That fourth is traded by insiders? Yeah. Okay. You know what? Like what Martha Stewart did, or what some of those other people have done? No, not yeah. really. It, what insider trading means is like uh, they tell you the insiders, like the CEOs, uh, the presidents who own stocks. What they have to do is they have to go and tell somebody that they want to liquidate their shares, okay? And then they start liquidating. Um, when you liquidate your shares as a CEO or president, it doesn't necessarily mean there's something wrong with the company. They're just trying to unlock some of their gains. However, if you see a CEO or president buy some of those, that stuff, it only means one thing. It's going to go up. They believe in the company. They believe something's come, about to happen. That's the only thing I look for in insider trading. So liquidating your shares don't really mean too much. Okay. Okay. Anything that stands out that seems bad? I'll say anything. Yeah, the, I mean, they're talking about the unemployment crisis, not for gas and oil firms. And then the five stocks that are growing their dividends by 15% per year. This is all good. Yeah. Yeah, this is all good. Is there any any one thing that catches you guys' eye that we should read? That Halliburton and Sean Burger, the time to take profits, what's that mean? Oh, Sean Burger, okay. It's time to take profits. Let's see. Time to it up. Oops, too much. All right, let's see. As a whole, commodity prices have been in a steady downtrend, led primarily by the metals, but oil has been an exception. Oil has been on a steady rise since the summer began, helped by uh, presumably a response to the Syrian crisis. Figure one displays oil prices for the last year. As we can see, there has been a sharp rise 
since the U.S. began seriously considering Syrian intervention in crude oil for October, delivering now trades at $107.98 at the time of the strike. However, uh, it seems the Syrian situation may end mostly dis uh, diplomatic, which could pressure certain oil-related stocks that have run up. These same stocks can likely be bought back 10 to 15 percent as oil goes down from here. Long term, the stocks I will discuss are good buys. In the short run, I think there is downside ahead for them. That doesn't actually sound very good, but they're not short, not short term, and that's what we're thinking, short term, right? 30 days? 30 days. Yeah. Do you still think we'll be okay? Well, let's see. This is this is what we we have to read to make you know, you know kind of figure it out. So long we have to consider the new oil boom. Many analysts and uh, and fellow authors I speak to continue to talk about the new U.S. oil boom. Uh, let's see, in the long term, a shortage of global supply. All right, let's talk about. It. Let's find out first. <laughs> there we go. Olive Burton is Slumber J's largest competitor, like Slumber J. I think that's what that stands for. Slumberters. I think they pronounce it Slumber J. Is it Slumber J? Mm -hmm. Is it I hear it on the. I hear Slumber it on the. J. I see it on CNBC, <laughs> that's how I know it. Slumber J. <laughs> they don't know how to type it. Listen there. In fact, uh, however, it's much more expensive than The stock price is just under the 52-week high, trading at $50.14 at the time of this writing. The current PE is much higher than Slumber J, sitting at $25, I mean 25.48, and the dividend yield just above 1%. It's absolutely poor for a company that generates over $4 billion in free cash flow annually, while the balance sheet of the company looks good and has been improving since 2009, the company is simply overvalued. A recent fair value analysis suggests that Halliburton is sitting atop the range calculated 27, oh, uh, uh, top of the range calculated. The price of the stock and the compensation you are paid in dividends simply does not justify owning the stock at these levels long term as it expands operations of the company and the stock should do well from here probably heading to 60 so long as oil stays above $90 a barrel short term I see oil headed lower and there is also inherent risk in the stock don't sound good not for so, short term not for short term it doesn't sound good okay did they say something about coming down 10 to 15 percent? I thought I read that something. These same stocks are likely bought back 10 to 15 percent as oil goes down from here. Huh? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oil goes down. Well, it had below ninety dollars. I don't think it'll go below ninety dollars. When's the last time it's been below ninety dollars? Oh, let's it check. Was on there. When? It, it was on there. Oh, it was? It was on the thing we saw? Yeah. Old prices of the last year. Oh, okay. US dollars. It was below $90 at one point. A couple points. It didn't stay there that long. It didn't stay there that long. That's sure not way up. Mm -hmm. Man, we still have three other stocks, right? So this might. Yeah. So I when got you, one. So when you compare Flair and Halliburton, right? You like Flair might be my first choice, Halliburton is my last choice right, right now. You got one? I got one. Okay. 
F-R-A-N. F-R-A-N. Francesco. This is on that list of um, three hated stocks that should be loved. Yeah, I can tell it was hated. <laughs> Let's pull it up on the uh, stock chart. F-R-A-N. If this is a good stop, with the gap down like that, it gives you more premium, which is nice. Um, if you look at it on FinViz, too, uh, like the the um, equity, return on equity, and assets and stuff, they're all three of them are in the positive. There's oh, nothing okay. in the red, so. Okay. So we something happened here with the stock market. Uh, it put the uh, scare in. Did it tell you what happened here? That's right. I was just going to look and see if it says what happened. That's, well, where did you find this? Uh, it's called um, MotleyPool.com. Motley, Motley, like Motley Crew. MotleyPool.com. Um, staying fresh is key. Additionally, operating costs must be kept low. Many companies are hemorrhaging cash just to keep staff and stores even at a minimum wage. But not Francesca. The company's key business goals are small stores, lots of stock, <coughs> weekly inventory changes, high inventory turnover, or in 30 days in advance to keep inventory levels low, minimizing the risk of falling margins and sales. They also have a debt free balance sheet. $33 million in cash short-term investments. The company's quick ratio stands at 2.2. The high for the retail sector where ratio of about 1 is considered an average earnings per share are expected to grow 24% this year, indicating that a trailing 12-month PE ratio of 22.8. Francesca is trading at a PEG ratio of 0.9, offering growth at a reasonable price. Okay. Um, what happened, but... So okay, so we'll read the news on this day. That was September or something. That's nine, eight, seven, six. Around six of September. Um, something happened to it. Uh -huh. But however, it, it went in oversold level, and you see how it come back up. So the market, that's a that's a trader tool. When it goes oversold, then you'll see traders buy it, buy it back up. Um, however, it looks like it's about to go back into oversold. The cool thing, if the guy is right, it'll probably create a, what you call a double bottom, right? Hit it, hit it, and then the stock takes off. And that's what it looked like it might be doing. So at eighteen dollars, it was at twenty-four. If we can get it at below eighteen dollars, and we find a good catalyst since it dropped so much, then we can probably make some good money because, as you know, options gives uh, you get more premium from an option when the stock is lower, or just a lot of fear in the stock. When the stock is lower, you get more premium. Okay, I'll show you guys that in a second. I don't think I've ever told you guys that. Oh, no, you guys are going to be a baby. Okay. So, let's go to here. All right. They have weak earnings. That's what happened. Let's see how weak it was. Uh, Francesca reported earnings of 33 cents a share in the second quarter of 2012, missing Zach's consensus estimates of 35 cents by 5.7 percent. Reported earnings were also management expectations of 35 cents to 36 cents due to soft sales and weak margins. Earnings of this specialty retailer have grew 18 percent. Year over year. That's pretty good. Francesca reported net sales 
of 89.6 million missing the Zach's consensus estimate of $94 by 4.7%. Sales were also below management expectations of 94.5 million to 95.5 million due to lower than expected comparable sales growth. Sales, however, increased 17% year over year. Francesca's jury business did well during the quarter, but was offset by weakness in the gifts category. Comps included direct-to-consumer sales decreased 1% in the second quarter as against a solid increase of 21% in the prior year quarter due to lower consumer traffic, lower transactions, and the lack of fashionable apparel. Excluding direct-to-consumer sales, comps decreased 3% in the current quarter. Comps were also below management expectations and an increase of 1 to 2 percent for the quarter. Most margins shrank 150 basis points to 53.3 percent due to lower merchandise margins caused by higher promotional spending. See what else. Following the sluggish results, the company has reduced its guidance for fiscal 2013. I bet you that's what hurts them the most. When a company can have bad earnings and report the guidance, meaning what's going to happen next quarter, lower guidance, it can make the stock drop. So say if it had said they're going to have good guidance next quarter, the stock would have probably stayed where it's at or went higher. So uh, that that's a uh, Sluggish result reduces guidance was 2013. Francesca now expects sales to be in a range of 343 million, 349 million for the fiscal 2013, compared to the prior range of 365 million, 370 million. Comps are expected to be flat to down 2% for the fiscal 2013, lower than the previous expectations of 4 to 5%. Francesca also slashes earnings outlook and now expects earnings per share in the range of $1.10 to $1.16 per share compared to the prior range of $1.27 to $1.30 per share. Oh, third quarter outlook. Let's see. The third quarter, in the third quarter, Francesca expects sales from $78 million to $80 million. Comps are expected to decline 2 to 5%. The company expects to open 11 new boutique stores in the quarter. Earnings per share are expected in the range of 19 cents, 21 cents for the third quarter. Management believes that the decline in traffic trends will take toll on the third quarter and eventually impact the full year's results. What do you think? That's just on the, the earnings. But that now if they said the outlook was different, you know. Um, Something like that, and he's like, okay. Right. You know, you don't really have anything. To, whoever the right, Molly Poop guy, is probably right as far as looking at the fundamentals. Fundamentals look good, okay? But however, you can have a fundamentally good stock, but if you don't have any, something that's going to grow with the company, something like the catalyst, they could probably bounce around there and go lower until something good comes out. Okay. This is the three worst It's like the three most hated stocks that should be up. Uh, TDC is the next one on your list. TDC. TDC. What time is it? Huh? Wow. I am so sorry. Let me let's do this last one and we'll call it quits. Okay. TDC. All right. Uh, this is Terra Data Corp. Uh, a classic stock that I like to look at. I like the way it pulls back. 
Um, it popped not on a lot of volume, but it did pop and went higher, and maybe that's why it went down so much. Okay. However, it's not overbought. Um, it created a floor right here. You guys know what this is? This candlestick is? is that we haven't, that is that? No, we haven't gone through candlesticks. This candlestick is called a hammer. Uh, the reason why they call it a hammer because if you grab a stem, you can like you can beat something. Okay, so if you see a stock that goes down, and it creates a hammer or something called a doji. Let's see if I can find one. That's something like cross, that, like, yeah. like a cross. At the end of it, you know, say if a stock is going up and you saw a doji, that means there's indecision at that point, and the stock will probably go down. Or if it was going down, you saw a doji or a hammer. Then there's another potential for the stock to turn, like it did here. Okay, um, so those are reversal candlesticks, I call them. So if you see a doji, which is that, it's called it's spelled D-O-J-I, or a hammer, which looks like that. So you have a long stem and something to beat something with on the other end. <laughs> So is it proven that the patterns always go down for the doji and the hammer typically it, goes up? It's been proven that it works 70, 80 percent of the time. Okay. Um, also, uh, while we're talking about candlesticks, does anybody know about where this opened up at? Okay. If you looked at this red candlestick, did it open up here or did it open up here? It opened up high and closed low. Right. So if you see a red candlestick, that means it opened up higher and closed lower. Okay. So if you see a white candlestick, that means it opened lower right here and closed higher. Um, another cool thing about candlesticks is that you have stems on them, okay? So on a stem, so say, let's, uh, actually, let's just take this one. That means that the stock opened up here, it closed lower, but before it closed lower, it actually went low, then closed up. See that? So, so it, when it got ready to close, it dropped back down to almost $55. Yeah, it dropped 50. Yeah, and then it closed up right there. Okay. Make the hammer. Make the hammer. And, and that's what any stock, it, almost every every candlestick should have some kind of stem on it because the stock will open up at a certain price and it goes higher, then it goes way high, then it comes low. You know, so you have a high. So when you look at a stock, they use these, you go to like Yahoo or something, you're going to have an open and a close and a high and a low for the day. Okay? It's always an open and a close and a high and a low. And for this one, it, it opened here, closed here, but it went as high as, shoot, $70-something or $69 and it came back down, closed there. Okay? So that's what the stems mean. But anyway, the stock market, the stock is not overbought. I'm liking what the MACD is showing. It looks like the black line is about to cross above the red line, which means it looks like there might be a turnover in the stock. Uh, the stock did uh, create the hammer, which tells me there to reverse. So now we just got to find, look at our news to see if we can find a catalyst or if there's any bad news that keeps us away from the stock. Okay. Oh, well, again, here's our financial highlights. Our return on assets is 12.6. Our return on equity is 21.3. Our quick and current ratio is decent, 1.8, 1.9. Our uh, long-term debt is only 1.5, which tells us that it takes a year and a half to pay off this debt. I don't know if I've talked to you guys about volume, why volume is important to look at sometimes. Because if you, you don't ever want to 
have like if you used to buy a stock in your own in your own accounts, if you buy a stock under a hundred thousand, right? What what that tells you is that there's not a lot of interest in it. They call it liquidity. Okay, so it's not a lot of liquidity. So what happens is if the stock the trading hands is under a hundred thousand, if you want to buy that stock, say, and then and the liquidity or the volume is fifty thousand. If you was to buy that stock and you want to get it at ten dollars, right? You might not get it until it's ten dollars fifty cents, because there's not enough people actually trading hands, and they want to get more money they possibly can from the stock. So you're gonna miss out on fifty cents. However, if you get with a stock like that with almost a million shares trading hands. Then, if you want to get the stock at ten dollars, you might get it at ten dollars and one cents, which is not today. They call it slippage. So slippage stocks always have slippage. All right. So here's the, let's look and see if we find any bad news on the stock, and then I'll put the rest on one. Uh, okay. Let's see. Really, I don't see anything bad about the stock. No, it becomes number forty-nine most shorted S and P five hundred. You know what? I read this and I was like, "There's no way I would put this stock on the." On the thing for us until I and then I read this and then I was amazed that they would put that on there. What this means is, you know what shorting means? That that means that the stock is people are betting the stock down. Okay, so it says it's the 70, 49th most shorted stock in the S and P component. So that means it's heavily shorted. That means there's a whole lot of people betting the stock down. So I said, okay, maybe I should stay away from it. Then I started doing some reading about the shorting of the stock. Now, when the short, when the market is highly shorted, that means it's highly shorted. The stock goes down, which, as we saw on our chart, this is on 8:30. The stock actually went down, right? Now we can actually buy the stock because it has to cover, as you saw this. The end of that chart going up, right? Let's see. So we saw the end of that chart going going back up. So at eight thirty, it was coming down. It was highly shorted. Now it's starting to come back up. So it's it's been shorted. Now it's being covered. So anytime you see something like that, like that, just read it to make sure it's it's safe. I mean, if, if you see the stock has to come down, it should be okay. A lot of times when it's highly shorted, they say, let's be a contrarian investor. So when the stock market is shorted, you go in there and buy it because it has to go back up. And that's exactly what it did right there. So anyway, that's what it means about shorting stocks. <laughs> um, The cool, I'm going to tell you personally, the cool thing of why I like this stock is this is a data company and it needs, uh, this, Microsoft needs Terra data, IBM needs Terra data, all these other little companies need Terra data because what Terra data does is collect data and feeds companies information to make a decision on things that's been collected. So it helps companies make decisions on their businesses. Have you ever heard of Teradata? Is that what they did? Huh? Oh, okay. Oh, this is good to know. Yeah. Oh. All right. Um, do you guys see anything you might want to read in this?
Yeah. There's uh-huh. not. Uh-huh. It appears optimistic. They don't have a lot of news on it. Not not a uh, catalyst that you can just see in the news. But I have I just took the time and did like more in depth research on it by going. Sometimes you can go directly. Let me show you. Just click right here, and it takes you directly to the company's website. I think there's data storage. Yeah, it's data storage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah companies, it takes you directly to their website. You can read all about it, things like that. That's what I do. Yeah, that's what So, we went over Francesca. I don't like Francesca. Yeah, don't forget it's just on the news, so I'm gonna try. I like did you guys like uh, the first one? Clear 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 Systems. Yes. Did you like Clear I like Clear Systems. Both the other we went over Halliburton. I felt like it was kinda toppy just like the guys said. Yeah. If we go back to the chart it did look toppy. Yeah. I would like to get it at a pullback. If it pulled back by time it's forced to sell hospitals. Maybe it's something to look at. I like Terra Data. We didn't go about much over it, but I just kind of studied it on my own. I was share, share that with you guys online. Okay. I like Terra Data a lot. I think Terra Data is here to stay. It's a, uh, it's uh, even though IBM's a storage company and and some of these other places, the storage companies, they still need Teradata, which is weird. The thing you passed out was saying that Teradata, Teradata had, it seemed like um, they had more of the market share and for companies to go to IBM. IBM and who was the other one? Microsoft or or Oracle. Sell. Yeah. Because if you're already on the Teradata platform, it's going to be, and, and who wants, in this day and age, wants to put their data at risk? Right. And right. it said here the last little thing said that while the customer buy data based products from IBM Oracle or Microsoft for a particular application, more often than not, that data still ends up feeding pre existing care data data warehouse. Yep. So it's still going there regardless of where they uh, I believe it's a, a strong company. And if you say we want to sell an option on it, we can get it it's an option at a safe level. Say this. Uh, that's that's it. Share data. So say the last support was around fifty-five dollars, somewhere right there. We can sell an option below well fifty-five dollars. So, <laughs> what was the last couple of ones that we didn't go over? Okay, we have Foster Wheeler, Fleet Maddox. I like Fleet Maddox. But I will um, put that on. It's FLTX is the ticker symbol. When you look it up, oh, FLTX. And then Foster Wheeler is FWLT. FWLT. If you want to look at those other two. Which is her data? I don't have that one there tomorrow. Yeah, they'll be all I had on it. I'm going to click that button and put it on here tonight, probably. Yeah, click, click. <laughs> <laughs> and when do we have to vote? Sunday. Sunday. So we gotta Next Sunday? This Sunday. Just cover Sunday. Sunday. That's, That's what I thought. Yeah. So that now, we are going to do this every month. We're moving our... We're going to leave our... I like it, yeah, because I'm able to... Because the reason why we decided to move it is that if we had did it last Monday, I wouldn't be able to give you guys some stops. Because it's so far away from options expiration. Right. Okay. So now that can change every day. Right. So now we can lock in more of our premium now since we're so close to expiration. The nineteenth, okay. right? This Friday. This actually options expire on Saturday. Yeah, on Saturday. But the but the, huh? the Saturday is the twenty first. They really expire on Saturday, but the market doesn't trade on Saturday. Right, so so Friday. Friday. And, and for your information, we party that day. It's called Players Party Day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> yeah, we have to have our votes done by Yes. Yeah. We vote online. 
Lily, do you have time to get Kendra all her information for her set up? Yeah. I'm sure. If it's not, I can do it another time. I mean, I do it next time. You don't have time. I will set you up for the meetup and uh, for iClub. iClub. Okay, cool. If we can set you up for the meetup, I can do everything else on the computer uh, online. Yep. I don't know what my I you know what messed up my iCloud so We can get we can get you back in. I was lost for what, two months? I mean, it kept moving me out somehow. You're working now, right? I'm working now. Okay. But yeah, for a while I would set me up and I wouldn't get lost again. I'm trying to find out, okay, well maybe it's just me. I'm all don't have to jack up. Now you know I got all these notes, I'm looking home like, what in the world did I write down? Why did I write that down? I still do. 